everybody and welcome back to Yarn Side Chats. I'm your host Sarah Wilson and today I'm going to be talking to you about something completely different, crochet. Now I know that a lot of you are not crocheters, but stick with me because not only are we going to be using a crochet hook, we're also going to be using a knitting needle. And what we're going to be talking about today is broomstick lace. It's a two row crochet pattern that requires um, a row of putting loops onto a large knitting needle such as this and a row of single crochet. So if you can chain and make a single crochet, you can make um, a really pretty lace stitch pattern. I have a sample of it here. I'll hold that up for you so you can see. And that's what that looks like. So it's a nice open, um, it's a nice open lace pattern. That's the front. I've done um, three, three repeats wide and three rows tall. And that is the back side. That's what that looks like. So essentially we're doing one row of single crochet and one row of large loops that are going to be taken off the knitting needle and twisted. So to get started um, you're going to need a knitting needle. This is a size 50 US or 25 millimeter and then you're going to need your yarn and then of course your um, crochet hook that is going to coordinate with your yarn as far as gauge goes. So grab those and let's get started. Okay, we're ready to start, but before we start, I just wanted to point out that in the pattern, each section of the pattern is formed by joining several of the loops together, twisting several of the loops together, and working single crochet through all of the loops at one time. So. Before you begin, you want to decide how many of those loops you're going to group together because you're going to want to chain a multiple of that um, number. So in this example, I've done multiples of five together, so I would have cast, I would have chained um, 15 to begin with and worked a row of single crochet across 15 um, stitches. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to be using groups of five, but you could certainly use groups of two or groups of three, groups of four, whatever you like. Um, the fewer loops that you group together, the lacier and more open your work is going to look, so do keep that in mind if you're going to change the number of stitches that you group together. So to start with, I am going to, uh, I have chained 11 stitches because I'm going to be working as an example two groups of stitches. <laughs> So I have, um, I have chained 11, so that's 10 plus an extra one. I'm going to go ahead and begin. I'm going to work a foundation row of single crochets starting in the second chain from the hook. And I'm just going to work single crochet all the way across. So I should have 10 single crochets at the end of this row. And on the next row, I will be drawing up 10 loops onto the knitting needle. Nice and simple. Again, if I, as I said, if you can make a chain and work a single crochet, you can definitely do this. It's good for all kinds of things. Makes really fast baby blankets because each um, pair of two rows is going to measure about an inch or more, maybe about an inch, between an inch and an inch and a half if you're using a large knitting needle as the one I've got today. Um, great for scarves, great for anything that you want to work quickly. Now when you get to the end of the row, you've, you've got a loop on your crochet hook and you just want to pull it up. Well, this one's not cooperating. Okay, you want to pull it up large because that is going to be the first loop that you're going to put onto your knitting needle. So I'm just going to double check and make sure that I have 10 across the row here. Okay, I've got two, four, six, oh, I think I miscounted one. Okay, we've got 10. All right, so you want to grab your knitting needle. And the last loop that you had that you drew up large, you want to go, just go ahead and put on the knitting needle. Oops, got all twisted around here. Okay, yep, and go ahead and pull that snug. Okay. So, for the first stitch in the row, you don't have to pull up a loop because you've already um, put that loop onto the knitting needle. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw up a loop in each chain 
and each single crochet across the row so that at the end of the row I'll have 10 loops. Now you notice that I have not turned the work, I have not done extra crochet, um, extra crochet chains at the end of the row like you generally would. The right side of the work is always going to face me. So you're going to work the single crochet rows from right to left and then the loop rows you're going to work from left to right across the row. So that's starting from the left. So now I'm going to start in the second single crochet because again I've already got the loop on the knitting needle for the first one. I'm going to drop a loop and put that right on the needle slide it down so it's on the thickest part of the needle because otherwise uh, if I left it on the tip of the needle then my loops would be um, not very uniform and you want them to be uniform in size as much as possible. So just going to drop one loop in each stitch across the row. If you find that you're one short or you've got one too many it's not a big deal. You can just either work a group with one fewer loop or a group with one more loop and no one will ever be able to tell except you I promise they would have to be looking very very closely and counting the loops in each of your groupings to be able to tell that you had one more or one fewer than you were supposed to have so really really um, just don't even worry about it don't even rip back completely unnecessary to do that okay I need one more to get 10. The way that I'm doing this, by the way, is I am actually coming down from over the top onto the yarn and, oops, maybe. I'm pulling, putting the hook from over the top of the yarn and pulling that through. And the loops are, have all been aligned on the knitting needle so that you can see the working yarn as I pull it is coming from over the front side of the needle. Okay, so now we're ready. That was our loop row. Now we're ready to do this row of single crochets. And again, we're working in groups of five loops. So you're just going to count two, four, five loops. You're going to pull them off the end of the needle. And now you're just going to put your, put your fingers through there and open it up. So you've you've got all the all the loops on here just like they came off the needle. You're gonna twist them and just open them right up. So you've got a hole right through all five of those stitches. Now you're gonna put your put your hook through there, drop a loop, and then you're gonna just chain one. And that's just going to anchor it at the beginning of the row. Okay. So now now that I've got it anchored. I'm going to work five single crochets into that hole in the middle of our grouping of, of loops. So that's two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's the first one and it's become twisted. I have one single crochet for each loop that I took off the needle. So again, if you're going to be changing the number of loops that you work into a group, just keep in mind that you are going to be working one single crochet in one single crochet for each loop in the group. Okay, so to, to begin the next one, you're just going to slide those off the needle and just immediately begin into your single crochets in the middle of the um, grouping of the loops. So again, I'm going to be working five across. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So I finished the last single crochet and now I'm ready again to begin the loop row. So I'm going to draw up that loop nice and large. Insert the knitting needle in there, pull that up, and now I'm ready to go ahead and start the next row of loops. Starting on the second row again, the second um, single crochet from the needle. I'm taking my hook over the top of the yarn and pulling it through and placing one loop on the needle for each single crochet. I'm going to do that across the row. Now this is just, um, this is row, row three. So I've completed the first two rows of the repeat of the pattern. This is a two row pattern. So I have finished 
um, the pattern and now I'm, I'm doing the second repeat of the pattern. So you know now everything that you need to know in order to work this stitch. Four, two, four, six, eight, nine. I need one more. If you're worried about having too few or too many stitches at the end um, of your row, you just can count them off in in groups of five, groups of two, however, however you like. So, yeah, that's what that is going to look like. That's my work in progress. I've completed a row. I've completed two rows, which forms the pattern, and I've begun row one again, which is the um, second repeat of the pattern. And now to keep going, what I would do, I would just take off these five loops and work five single crochets into that. I would take off the next five loops and work five single crochets into that, and then I would be get ready to begin my loop row once again. So I can uh, I can just repeat and repeat, and as I work, it's going to be growing by about an inch to an inch and a half for every um, two rows. So it's a very quick lace. It's, um, again, great for lots of things. And um, that's it. Now you've got it down. So let's go wrap up. That's it for this time. You've just learned a beautiful two-row lace repeat that is going to eat up yarn like nothing else. I'm the Sexy Knitter reminding you that sexy is a state of mind. Visit me on the web at www.sexyknitter.com or on Twitter and Ravelry as The Sexy Knitter. See you next time.